Hey guys, today we're gonna answer the question, how do I know God really exists? This is a great question, and honestly, it's one that everybody asks and should ask, because here's the reality. If God doesn't exist, then nothing else really matters. But if God does exist, nothing matters more. And so this is an important question for us to ask and answer, and so we're gonna address it today. We're gonna talk about four things that help us to know that God really exists. First, we're gonna talk about design. The reality is every design points to a designer. Like if you see a great piece of artwork, it points to the artist who made that artwork. And the same is true for the design that is around us in our world. It points us to the reality that there is a designer who created it all. And we know that because in Romans 1 verse 20, Paul says this, for his invisible attributes, namely his eternal power and divine nature, have been clearly perceived ever since the creation of the world and the things that have been made, so they are without excuse. And likewise, in Psalm 19 verse one, the psalmist says this, the heavens declare the glory of God and the sky above proclaims his handiwork. And so I want you to seriously consider the world that is around us and consider the complexities by which it is made and formed. Think about it, from the magnitude of the stars in the heavens, in our entire galaxy, in our universe, down to the very nature of your cells that make up your body. Like literally think about it. As you're watching this video, you're not even thinking about the reality that your heart is pumping and pushing blood all throughout your body so that you can breathe and live. The reason for that is because God has designed our bodies and our life and our entire world in such a way that life is able to actually happen. The next thing that we should consider is desire. Ecclesiastes 3.11 tells us, he has put eternity into man's heart. Here's the reality. Every one of our hearts has an eternal void that can only be satisfied by an eternal God. Here's what I mean, is that think about that time where you wanted to win that championship game so badly and you put in so much time and effort and energy to do it and then you won. And then a couple days later, guess what? you were on to the next thing. It didn't leave you satisfied. Fill in the blank for whatever that looks like for you, whether it's fitting in to that friend group or making that grade or whatever it might be, you know that once you have attained that thing, it is temporary. It does not last because our desires can only be satisfied by an eternal God. But what does that really mean? One guy put it this way, if we find ourselves with a desire that nothing in this world can satisfy, the most probable explanation is that we were made for another world. And that world isn't Mars, it's not Pluto, it's not Asgard, it's not Tatooine, if that's even how you say that. And it's not the planet that the Monstars were from, from Space Jam. That world, that other world that we were created for is eternity spent in perfection with God himself. And so our desires and their inability to be satisfied by this world points us to the reality that there is an ultimate desire that can only be fulfilled by God himself. Next, we must consider cause and effect. What I mean by that is that everything had to have an origin. All of this had to come from something. Otherwise, we're led to believe that time plus chance plus nothing equals everything, which makes just about zero cents. And so what we know from Genesis 1 is that everything had a beginning. And we know that in the beginning, Genesis 1-1 tells us that God created the heavens and the earth. So I would propose to you that it takes more faith to believe that all of this just randomly happened the way it did than it does to believe that there is a God in heaven who formed you, who knows you, and who loves you. Lastly, we must consider conscience. We all inherently know right versus wrong, good versus bad. The reason that we know that is because Paul tells us in Romans 2 verses 15 and 16, 
They show that the work of the law is written on their hearts, while their conscience also bears witness, and their conflicting thoughts accuse or even excuse them on that day when, according to my gospel, God judges the secrets of men by Christ Jesus. He's saying that you automatically know right versus wrong. Like, think about it. That time whenever you were a little kid and you went into the pantry and you opened it up real quietly and reached your hand up into the cookie jar without mama's permission, you knew that that was not right. The reason that that is true is because there is an ultimate authority, aka God, who has defined what is right and what is wrong, what is good and what is bad. And because we automatically know that, it proves that God has written his law upon our hearts and therefore all of that points to the reality and truth of God's existence. So how do we know that God really exists? We consider four things, design, desire, cause and effect, and conscience. So here's the question that I want to leave you with. If God really exists and he has formed you and he knows you and he loves you enough to send his own son to die for you, are you ready and are you willing to surrender your life to follow him?